I wonder if this matters. Because the guy comes back. No, they have to split up. No, yeah, they have to split up. Shit. Let's see what happens. Let's go together. And so Cherry and I head out in search of the truck. As we make our way down, center guy appearing in all directions, I accidentally bumped right into a man who's out with his daughter. Oh, pardon me. I hop back to my feet and go bow to the man in the apology. Ow! <laughs> he bows at the same time. We manage to bunk our heads together. Sorry! As her dad drops to his knees, clutching his head, the girl begins to wander off. Hannah, wait! The man lurches to his feet and rushes out to the girl. She seems like an odd kid, only ten or so, but strangely cold and distant for her age. As we make our way back down the road, Cheery's eyes light up on a cafe. Man, I am super hungry, she mutters. Not now, we have to find that truck. Yeah, I know. Stride versely along and though Cheery flashes the eater a long lingering look, she falls into step, into step behind me. Cheery and I wander around time for another 10 minutes or so. Starbucks. We don't see any, any sign of the truck though. Oh, I sigh. It really is good and gone, huh? It turns to look back at Cheery. Huh? <laughs> Wait. What? Cherry's gone? She must have slipped away from me at some point. I took a quick look around, but there's no sign of her. When did she split off? She was just there two or three minutes ago. It's 12.35. The sales demo starts in 25 minutes. What do I do? I don't have time to go looking for Cherry, because I'll have to keep searching for the truck by myself then. But I have no clues to go on, so I don't know how I'm ever going to find it. Ah! Uh, what should I do? It's not <laughs> Uh, okay. What? Oh, first out of the bug. So did the story change? What's that? His hands went still as a strange noise intruded in his reverie. Whatever it was, it was close by. What in the world is that sound? I need to focus on finishing this article. Why am I doing this again? Never mind you focus on finishing this article. I'm going to try to immerse himself in this writing again. For long, you stopped worrying about the curious sound. So I'm guessing... Time passed, eventually the pace of his writing slowed down a bit when Urkawa glanced at his watch. It was later than he thought. Pretty soon he was going to have to head over to get an interview from the diet drink people. He reached into his bag with the project proposal to double check the demo location. Huh? The proposal, it's gone. Crap, where the heck did it go? He checked out around the table, but he didn't see it anywhere. Maybe he left it at the, the cafe, the non smoking place. We didn't have time to go back for it now. His phone rang. What now? When Rakao snapped as he answered it. A tiny squeak came through the receiver. It was followed by the sound of sniffling sobs. I'm sorry. I just... Shiaki? Was she done with her interviews, maybe? It's no use. People won't stop to talk no matter how hard I try. Her voice broke up into further sobs. Look, I've got my own problems to deal with. You're just going to have to find some way to manage. But I can't. Sorry, I'm hanging up now. And so he did. He had to hurry. He had to get to the demo venue. We lost the map and forgot the location. Think man, he told himself. What would they hold an event like this? Probably someplace big, right? There ought to be a guide or someone out front, too. With these assumptions in mind when our cow broke into a run, searching ahead as he went. He stopped when he caught sight of a particular multi tenant office building. A whole stream of women were filing inside. All of them looked a little heavy, too. Hater, 
Decided to be the health food company sells them out. Hurried into the building. The women were queued up down the hallway. This was definitely the place then. More confident by the moment when Rakawa made his way up the stairs. Finally he reached the front of the line. There was a notice posted outside the door we had when Rakawa read it out loud. Auditions for the starring role in Sun TV Sumo Queen 2. It was a sequel series of a recent TV drama featuring full-figured actresses. It's a sense drama about a string of murders that crop up while a group of female sumo wrestlers tour the country. The Megashira Komusubi, Sekiwaki, and Ozeki, the fifth through second place wrestlers from both East and West, are all killed in sequence, leaving only to the two top ranked Yokozuna with the real killer still unknown. Things come to a heated climax in the ring during the final match. When the loser tearfully confesses to her crimes, it concludes with a victorious wrestler who had also been playing the part of detective, sorrowfully looking the culprit in the eye and stating it's off to the big house with you. That's it, Minerka exclaimed with a new, a new project of pearls of spring fully formed to his mind. He felt as if he had been struck by a bolt of divine inspiration. Big bodies, bigger names. A new arena opens for aspiring plus size actresses. Never mind the diet drink demo, this is going to be Minerka's big story. But. Minerka managed to meet the deadline. The show, however, wound up being a massive flop. Sales of that issue of Forsyth General Gossip were likewise lackluster, with an unprecedented number of copies going unsold. Uh. <laughs> Mr. Tiama's debts continued to spiral out of control, and before long, Heaven Publishing was no more. I'm going to be seeing that a lot, aren't I? I guess. Bad end. Number 21 Sumo Show does massive belly flop. When Arakawa wound up going to the wrong venue entirely, his main problem was that he didn't have good detailed directions to the Burning Hammer demo. Tama can do something at 12.15 that causes Chiri to head to that cafe and Chiri can help Arakawa get to where he needs to go. <sighs> okay. Well, that was 